Hello and welcome to another video in my series on uh, control systems engineering. In this video we'll discuss the PID controller. This controller is uh, by far the most commonly used controller in industry. Uh, the controller uh, contains an algorithm that was developed heuristically and that's simply a, a fancy way of saying uh, it was developed by trial and error. Uh, there was a Russian engineer named, a Russian-American engineer, he's an immigrant to the United States, named Nikolai Minorsky, uh, and he was working for the uh, U.S. Navy and developed this algorithm in the early part of the 20th century. <clears throat> and what he did is he simply, uh, the Navy was interested in developing an autopilot for ships, so an uh, um, uh, automatic controller that would steer the ship itself. And what uh, Minorsky did was he simply went and watched a bunch of uh, helmsmen steering ships and asked questions to them of why they were doing what they were doing and came up with this alg algorithm uh, that has turned into the PID controller. Uh, we're going to focus our attention, obviously, on the controller uh, in this video. <clears throat> And we're going to, but we're going to pull it out of the system. But at the same time, we need to remember what, where the controller is in the standard control loop. Uh, basically, uh, it is taking an input signal called the error, <clears throat> uh, which is a comparison of the actual value with the uh, reference value, and then producing a signal that goes downstream to the actuator. <clears throat> the actuator acts and uh, changes the plant its operation so that the actual value is more in line with the reference value. So we need to remember that as we're looking at the controller in detail. <clears throat> the signal uh, that's input into the controller, uh, as I explained, uh, is, the, is the comparison between the, well, it's the sensed value. The actual value goes through a sensor and then becomes the sensed value, which uh, hopefully uh, will be equal to or have some type of relationship with the uh, actual value, and then that's compared with the reference value. Um, so the error is just subtracted from the reference value. The error is uh, a measure of how much the actual value is deviating from the reference value. And then uh, the controller acts on the error signal and uh, uh, sends an actuation signal downstream, a command signal to the actuator to tell it to uh, uh, change the plant, to operate on the plant. Uh, PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. And uh, we've seen uh, just now we have the controller represented at a single block. But as uh, uh, happens in most control loops, uh, that block can have uh, you know more complicated uh, structure inside of it. So we're going to look inside of it and see what's going on. And uh, as is sort of obvious by its name, uh, the PID controller is a three-part controller. It has uh, three actions. <clears throat> All three parts take the error as an input, <clears throat> but they operate on the error differently uh, and produce different actions, as they're called that then are summed together to form the uh, command signal to the actuator. Uh, what Minorsky discovered heuristically is uh, he, uh, when he was watching the helmsman and asking questions to the helmsman why they were doing what they were doing, there were three different actions that he identified. Uh, the further away from the desired course that the ship was, the more the helmsman turned the ship's wheel. So if the ship was slightly off course, then the helmsman would make a small correction to bring the ship back on course. If the ship was way off course, the helmsman would put in a large input uh, to the wheel. So he'd turn the wheel a lot more to uh, correct the, uh, uh, the, the fact that the ship was, off, was way off course. And then also, the helmsman was cognizant of his past actions, what he had done in the past. And if he had put in a number of corrections uh, in the past and the ship still hadn't responded adequately, he would increase those corrections uh, to try to get a response. Uh, 
Um, then the third action was that the helmsman would anticipate change. And uh, if the ship seemed to be turning away from the desired course for one reason or another, so uh, she was on course, but then uh, started to deviate from the course uh, due to wind or current or some other effect, the helmsman would respond even before the ship got off course, so even before the air had a chance to develop. <clears throat> And the aggressiveness of this uh, type of response depended upon how fast the ship was turning away from the desired course. So the three actions of the helmsman were based on the present, how far the ship currently was off course, <clears throat> uh, the past, how much steering input had been put into the ship's wheel and how, how the ship had responded to that. And then the future, uh, if there was a anticipation that the, uh, the, the, the ship was turning from the desired course, the helmsman would react before it actually had time to uh, develop uh, the deviation uh, from the desired course. So these three actions were combined into a single action, uh, namely the turning of the ship's wheel. That's all the, the uh, controller could do. And then in uh, 1922, Minorsky published his results in a paper, and uh, he, not only that, he quantified these actions and developed them into a mathematical algorithm. So we're going to look at those uh, actions more closely in block diagram form. So we'll start with uh, the principal action. Uh, we take the error signal and we multiply it by a constant and then produce what's called a proportional action. And that's fed on downstream uh, and becomes uh, actually part, as we'll see, of the command uh, action to the actuator. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the error and we're going to integrate it. And this is actually a, a um, what we're doing is we're accumulating the error as we go along. So we're, this integral here basically sums the area under the integral curve up to the uh, current uh, uh, point in time. And then we're going to multiply that by a, a constant and feed it in as a contribution to uh, the uh, command signal going on downstream. We call uh, the result of that, the integration and then the multiplication by this constant, the integral action. And then we're going to take the error and uh, take the derivative of it. Um, and what that is, is uh, uh, what, we'll, what we'll have here is the slope of the error curve at the current point in time. <clears throat> we'll multiply it by a constant, also feed it downstream. And we call this here the derivative action of the controller. So the output command uh, to the actuator is the sum of the re these three actions. So uh, let's look a little bit at the, or, or sort of give a more intuitive uh, explanation of uh, these actions. The uh, proportional action, which is the multiplication of the error times the, uh, this is called a proportional gain, <clears throat> is based upon the current error. Uh, the action, the integral action, which is uh, we integrate the error, the area under the error curve, multiply it by a constant, and then that result is a, a action based upon the accumulated error history, the error as a function of time uh, integrated up to the current uh, point in time. <clears throat> and then uh, this last action, we take the error, uh, the error, we get its slope, we multiply that by a constant, and so this is a, a action based upon how fast the error is changing at the present point in time. So all of the three actions uh, observed by Minorsky were quantified and expressed in this algorithm. So let's look at the three actions of the PID uh, in a little bit more detail here. Uh, we, these have names, actually, uh, and the PID uh, gains, there are three of them are called a proportional gain, which is the upper gain with the P as a subscript, the integral gain, and the derivative gain. 
they serve as sort of weighting factors that allow us to emphasize or de-emphasize the three different control actions. Um, so if you make uh, KP very large and KI and KD small, you're emphasizing the proportional action. If you make KI big and the other two small, you're emphasizing the integral action. And the same with KD. If you make it large and the other two small, you're emphasizing the derivative action. So with these three different gains, we can independently control the contribution that each of these different actions has to the total uh, command signal going to the actuator. Now, when we decide on what gains we want to put into these three blocks, uh, that we, we actually term that, quote unquote, designing the PID controller. That's kind of a funny uh, use of the word design because in, uh, in the engineering field, design usually means something much more uh, open-ended than simply picking uh, the values of three different constants. But uh, that's traditionally the way that it's referred to. And then when you adjust these three different uh, gains on an existing system to affect the closed loop performance, this is called tuning the controller. And there's a whole science on tuning PID controllers. I haven't produced it yet, but I, I shall produce a video uh, uh, in the near future on uh, different methods of tuning PID controllers. <clears throat> As always, uh, this uh, uh, subject, PID control, can, and more detail on it can be found in my book, uh, Control Systems Engineering, A Practical Approach, which is available from PolyX Engineering uh, for $25 plus shipping and handling. Uh, to order it, send me an email uh, to the email address given here. And that's the end of this video. I hope to have you as a guest in a future video. Thanks for watching.